How does AI affect the job search? In this video, we're going to cover the applicant tracking system, which is it's not new, but we should go over it just in case. But we're also going to cover um, new AI advancements, including Tangai, which is a robot that does interviews for job seekers. Instead of having to work with a real recruiter, you actually interview with a robot now. So if that's something you're interested, you want to learn more, stay tuned. Hey, this is Michael with Michael's Business English. For those of you who have no idea who I am, my name is Michael Rincon. I'm a former six-figure data analyst turned career coach and ESL instructor, and I support English language learners like you improve your career development through communications and language training. If you're new here, on this channel, we cover business English, communications, and career development. So if you are into that, make sure you like and subscribe, and all the links in this video will be in the description box below. Okay, so let's talk about AI now in the job search process, right? So things have changed depending on who you are, when you started job searching, you know, 10, 20 years ago, I mean, ATS has been on for a while, but it used to be that a lot of things were done via paper and through connections, but AI has uh, become commonplace now and it's something that's here to stay. So I'm going to separate this video into a few sections. The first one is going to be on uh, AI in general as in terms of the applicant tracking system and how that affects you as a job seeker and the second part will be the actual interviewing uh, process which is going to be as well as now talking about specifically the robot called Tengai and how that might affect you and I'm actually going to pull up some blog posts for this video there's a couple of blogs I recommend that are worth checking out the first one I'm going to talk about is a blog called Maya um, they are a uh, staffing firm that specializes in AI, right? So like, they have a lot of articles on AI's technology and how that affects the future. So I'm gonna go through this and talk a little bit about it. So one thing that, the most common thing you should be aware of is how this affects you. Um, when you're applying for jobs on sites like Indeed or LinkedIn, um, AI will recommend certain posts to you. And how that affects you is like, depending on the job you're looking at, the AI is going to recommend more jobs for you, right? So when you're looking at jobs on LinkedIn, it's going to say recommended jobs. This is why I say things like your job title on your LinkedIn profile is so important because you may get these notifications from LinkedIn saying jobs you may be interested in, right? Because because you're interested in this job, because you know, I understand like everything you do on social media on LinkedIn affects everything else. And so if you're wondering why, for example, you get Facebook ads, like well, why do I get this Facebook ad for this? Why you see Google ads kind of are in your email, for example, like for these uh, offers that seem very familiar, it's because AI is at place. Uh, AI is there to try to help you to try to like, what does Michael like to do? Um, based on your activity, we're going to give you this. Um, you can use that to your advantage by making sure that when you're looking for jobs, you're not wasting time of looking at jobs that you have no interest in at all. So for example, as a English teacher, I would not be looking at jobs um, for analytic positions anymore. So I shouldn't be looking for like web developer positions. Um, because if I, if I, even if I do it just for fun, just to check it out because I have curiosity, what'll happen is that the AI will read my data through things like cookies and through um, other play behavior in the background of technology and say, let me give you more information like this. So when you're job seeking, just keep in mind that you only want to look at the jobs that make sense to you. Don't just like click on random jobs. If you're curious about a job, that's okay. But just keep in mind that's what the AI is working to help you is to serve you more information. So if you're using job boards, for example, this is incredibly important because what's going to happen is they're going to keep sending you more recommendations based on how you are uh, spending your time. Now, how does that affect the ATS? Um, in particular, when you are applying for jobs, this is really important to understand is like your resume, your CV, and your LinkedIn, you have to write for both a human audience as well as a computer audience. And I gotta give credit where credit's due. This actually comes, this idea comes from Rachel Miller from Grow Your Audience. Rachel does uh, content marketing for Facebook. She's got an entire uh, business around that. And one thing she talks about in her course is that it's not just about creating content for people who like Facebook, people who are your audience, but making sure that Facebook itself likes your content because the algorithm affects how that gets get out. So how this applies for you is that making sure when you're writing your resume, your CV and your LinkedIn profile, you don't just write it thinking like who is gonna read it. It's not just for your hiring manager. You're also writing it to make sure that you are adhering 
to applicant tracking systems. So one of the things that I talk about in some of my courses is to make sure that your resume, your CV, um, is applicant tracking system approved, ATS compliant, which at a minimum means it's, I have templates that you can use by the way, very simple, but at the minimum you want to make sure there's no elements, there's no lines, no blocks. You want to make sure the font is readable, it's enough that it can be read, and you want to make sure that you're using the correct file format. Now I believe the correct one is a Word document, it might be PDF, I'll double check, um, I'll make sure I comment on this video. But just make sure you follow the instructions on the application. Because sometimes it'll say, here's the thing, like this is the thing that really bothers me is that there is no absolutes when it comes to this because um, some, some applicant tracking systems will say Word and some applicant tracking systems will say PDF. And the reason that it's Word versus PDF is such a huge uh, argument over that is because a lot of the applicant tracking systems uh, were used to using Microsoft Word. That's my understanding. But again, like whenever you're applying for a job online, for any reason, make sure you just follow the instructions. So if it says Word, then you use Word. Um, what other things I need to think about with the applicant tracking system? The big thing I think is making sure you have the right keywords because that's the thing that's really important. Like if a job description says, um, looking for someone who has experience in this skill, then make sure somewhere in the job, in the resume, you mention that skill. So you'll notice my profile, for example, uh, will say things like metadata, EDT, data mapping, right? That is not an accident. That is because at the time I was targeting um, jobs that actually were looking for metadata roles because that's my experience was it. I set on a job as a metadata analyst and so it made sense. I was looking for other jobs within that sphere, a very tiny circle, very small niche uh, job market, but big enough that I could go in there and kill it. Like by putting in these words, that are specific to my industry, that are specific to the roles that I'm interested in, like it's polarizing, it's gonna eliminate 90% of jobs, I'm gonna get rejected automatically, but the 10% of jobs I do get approached for, I'm gonna be the, the one of the top candidates because I'm one of the few people who has experience with metadata. Uh, what else is there? So regarding the AI, so I'm looking at this blog right now and see if there's anything we can talk about here. Um, it looks like this is not, what I was looking for from it. This is going to be more for recruiters. So um, let me talk about this one thing I saw here. So this is what I just talked about before. I was talking about how AI affects the job board. You can see the section here says run more efficient job advertising by using AI. It just, just, just reinforces what I just said about the job boards. So if you're using anything, you can see like, um, I'll summarize this real quick is that basically um, the AI program that they're using, you see Panda IQ, Panda Q, um, AI algorithms classify jobs and all this. Um, it's being used on the different job boards. So like I said before, just make sure when you're job searching, you're making sure you're picking the correct uh, jobs and you're not just wasting time. Don't just pick a job because you think it's interesting. Make sure it's a good job because it's, it's going to teach the algorithm what jobs they should send you, which is going to reduce the process time you spend looking for work. Uh, the other thing I want to show you was the AI, sorry, the uh, robot. Uh, this is called Tengai. It's an unbiased robot uh, for interviews. And I won't go into a lot of details about this one because I think this only affects a handful of job seekers right now. I don't think everyone's going to be dealing with this, but this is about a robot that's supposed to be unbiased. Right, it's, so you can see it's about removing the unconscious bias. Um, I actually did a podcast interview. I don't know if it's been out yet, but I did a podcast interview with Maya. That's the reason why I want to talk about them. And we actually talked about this, about the uh, experiences, like what it's like, how AI affects recruiting. And what he found was that there was a study done by Google where they built an AI recruiting bot that was biased. Um, it was inadvertently biased, which is weird because it's AI. But um, you can see here, like what AI, what AI is talking here. And so um, several diversity and inclusion softwares to help Assess blind resumes. Bias. So, right, here's some really interesting examples, right? So, what Tenga is pointing out here is that certain things happen. Most uh, most uh, recruiters and hiring managers have biases and they have unconscious biases they're not aware of. And you can see things, something as simple as like you've been rejected. 71% of have been rejected because of the tattoos, 40% have been, oh, oh stop. So this one really shocks me right here. 
which is studies show that even before the recruiter asks a single question about the candidate's skills and competency, many have already perceived opinions that color their judgment. So, you know, you're, you're worried about AI affecting you the interview. I wouldn't worry too much about it, right? So you can see this is uh, from years of experience and you can see it's unbiased. So a blind interview with Tengai brings more honest and sincere answers according to 76% of tens candidates who said so. So, you know, you ultimately like, if you have an interview with AI, just like you treat it like a normal interview. It's very simple. You just gotta focus on um, doing everything you've learned for how to prepare for interviews, right? And you can see another one here, like data-driven hiring decisions. Tengai screens for soft skills and personality traits. Very simple, like nothing's changed is what I'm trying to point out here in terms of interviews, even though it's AI stuff, like nothing's really changed. You might be thinking like it might be different because it's a computer, it's because it's AI. But the point I want to make is that nothing has really changed, even though we have AI. So don't panic too much. Don't fret over it. Just remember that everything you've learned in your interview skills is going to be applicable for AI. All right, let me uh, end this video quick as a quick summary is to remind you that uh, AI affects the job search when you're mostly looking for jobs online. It's mostly going to be affecting the job boards. It's going to help you. It helps filter out and feed you roles that are a good fit for you. And the other thing is that um, the ATS, like just make sure you follow the instructions for that specific applicant tracking system when you're applying for jobs online, if that's how you choose to go. Um, and otherwise, make sure you have the right keywords from the job posting. Make sure that's on there because that way the computer knows that this is a good match. Like they're actually doing keyword analysis and showing um, the, the firm, showing the recruiters and hiring managers how close is this resume a match. That's why most resumes get rejected automatically. It's like you're not a good match. Think about it from like OkCupid. It's a great example. If you go online, you'll see like 75, excuse me, 75 percent match, 80 percent, 90 percent match. How good of a match? You, oh wow, I apologize. Um, how good of a match you guys are? So think about it like that way, like it affects hiring decisions. So you want to make sure you're as much of a match for that role as you can, as close as you can, um, without violating any of the ATS problems, like putting elements in the forms. And for the computer, for the AI interviews, it's just like a normal interview. Just practice like you normally do, prepare, and you'll be fine. All right, thanks guys. If you have any more questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Um, don't forget to check out my resume CV checklist in case you have questions. This is going to help you when applying for jobs um, in any situation, but especially if you're applying for jobs online. It's, it talks about making sure you have the correct format, what you need to have there. So make sure you check that out. Um, otherwise, send me a DM on LinkedIn if you have any questions, you want to talk to me. Happy to answer you. Happy to help you out. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.